Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Uh, we're going to be covering computer networking, uh, part two. Uh, again, we're tell you a little bit about myself. I've got a background in uh, network technology, uh, about 25 years. I've been teaching uh, network technology, computer repair, uh, computer networking for about 10 years, both at uh, RLPs and colleges. Uh, my certifications, A+, plus, Network+, plus, uh, Cisco, uh, Cisco Instructor Certified. Uh, let's get started. Oh, also down here, ComputerNetworkingTraining.net. This is a website we've set up. Uh, you could find some additional resources that you might find helpful. Well, let's get started. Uh, this is uh, part two. Uh, we're continuing the introduction uh, for computer networks. Uh, local area networks, the LAN, L-A-N. Uh, these are computers, uh, a computer network of devices uh, confined in a relatively small area. It could be an office or a single building. A uh, set of computers, uh, generally we have a server uh, and other resources such as a printer or faxes. Complex network. This would be a local area network that is a little bit more complex, a little bit larger. It might be extended over more than one building and with many different resources connected. Uh, metropolitan area network. This is the, what we call the MAN. Uh, this is a computer network. It's larger than what we consider a local area network where we'll probably have several buildings uh, tied together, maybe in a city. Uh, fairly large, complex network. Uh, Man uh, may use different uh, transmission technologies to connect these buildings together. Might use wireless or microwave. Uh, different media, uh, fiber optics. Fiber optics is generally used between buildings uh, to remove any ground effects. Also, uh, we wouldn't want lightning to hit any cable that's exposed outside the building. Fiber optics gives us that insulation. Wireless is also very popular, but it's not as secure as a cable or fiber optics. Uh, wide area networks, the WAN. Uh, the wide area network, a good example of that is the Internet. Uh, these are networks that are scattered over fairly large geographic areas. Could be two cities connecting together, two states, two countries. WANs carry dis a lot of data over great distances. We're talking about uh, several miles. Uh, some of these devices will go as far as 50 miles before they need to connect to another device to be uh, amplified or regenerated to be sent again. Uh, WANs use different uh, transmission methods and different types of technologies and different medias. Most of the WANs we connect to today uh, for our internet are all done with fiber optics. Fiber optics are running at about 10 gigabytes right now. WANs can uh, connect offices in the same organization across town or across the world from each other. What's really nice about the WAN is we can have an office in California and New York and the workers in those two offices can share uh, resources across the network, just like if they were in the same building. Uh, creates a lot of uh, a lot of convenience for accessing data, files, information, and, and programs and other resources. Wide area networks. Now, this would be an example. We've got Los Angeles here. This cloud will represent a large number of computers. Uh, in New York, again, a large number of computers, and we're connecting through a router and through some kind of a media. And this media would normally be uh, some fiber optics cable, but we also could connect uh, via satellite or microwave. There is other types of technologies that are used today. Microwave, especially over uh, some long distances, uh, and also satellite uh, to connect uh, to maybe really remote areas. Common elements. A uh, client. A uh, client is a computer on the network uh, that is requesting resources or services. A server is another computer on the network that is managing the access to this network and also managing our shared resources, uh, making sure that computers that are connecting to the network are authorized uh, to have access to the resources that they're trying to get access to. Uh, common elements, again, uh, continued. Network interface card, the NIC. Now, this is a device that's inside the computer or connected inside the computer that we uh, connect our media cable to uh, or some kind of a media. Media, again, could be wireless, could be fiber optics, or could be a CAT6 or CAT5 cable, copper. copper. Uh, network operating systems, the NOS. Uh, this is server software. 
that enables the computer to provide uh, this access control and managing uh, resources. Uh, these operating systems could be Microsoft Windows, uh, Novell uh, Netware, and also Unix, uh, three primary sources there for our server software. Host. Now, a host is a device that provides resource sharing or for other computers on the network. Any of our desktops could be a host because we could share files uh, from one computer to another besides the server. Now, a node. A node is everything that's connected on the network that has a unique uh, address. We have actually two addresses on each device. We have what's called a MAC address, and we also have a an IP address. The MAC address is what we call a physical address, and the IP address is what we call a, a soft address because it's, it's a logical that we can actually change it. Topologies. Now, topologies, uh, we need to discuss. There are several different types of topologies, and this is actually the physical arrangement of the devices and how they're connected. Uh, we have a ring a bus and a star formation. We're going to cover each one of these. And also we can have a hybrid where we mix uh, some of these different types of topologies. Uh, first one we're looking at here is the bus. The bus is just a single uh, cable that all the computers are connected to. And uh, that's not really used too much anymore because if the cable has a break anywhere in the cable, we can lose connection to all the computers. So it's not very reliable. Also, the speed of the bus generally isn't as fast as, as we need. Now, another type is the ring. Uh, the token ring was very popular for a while. IBM introduced it. Uh, but it's lost popularity because it just doesn't have the speed uh, potential anymore that Internet is providing. So what we're seeing today is most everything is connected in what we call a star uh, configuration, star topology. And we're primarily using Ethernet. Uh, Ethernet today is at least uh, 1 gigabit per second, uh, moving up to 10 gigabits per second. Ethernet is a very inexpensive technology, uh, easy to set up a network, and it's pretty, pretty inexpensive for what you get. In summary, uh, local area networks, the LAN, uh, the most popular form for small businesses in the home, uh, we move up to our wide area network where we're trying to connect other computers across town or to some other city or even some other country. So our wide area network is geographically much larger than our local area network. Local area networks primarily use Ethernet. Ethernet is limited on the distances where the WAN technologies pick up because the WAN technologies are able to extend the, those distances using different types of technology. Uh, DSL probably being uh, one of the most popular now for connecting homes to the Internet, also businesses. Uh, all client-server networks uh, share some common elements. Uh, activity. I'm uh, going to do uh, Lab 1.2, and then we also have a Quiz 1.2. These will help to kind of reinforce uh, what we've been discussing uh, concerning the LAN, the local area network, and the wide area network. Thank you very much for your time.